So if you think I'm wrong, prove me wrong by experiment. But remember, there may be a reason why diesel storage tanks don't look like Swiss cheese and why drywall is placed directly on steel stud framing and structural steel for fire insulation and a reason why those firewise professors were so perplexed. And even though the firewise professors, FEMA, Mr. Mackey, and Dr. Greening all suggested that NIST should test and investigate to find the source of the sulfur, there is a reason why NIST ignored all their advice and never conducted any experiments or found that source of sulfur to solve this deepest of mysteries. Perhaps NIST knew the most logical cause of the sulfidation of the steel is from some type of thermitic reaction because it matches all other evidence such as the molten steel or iron flowing out the side of the tower well before its collapse, the iron spheroids found in the dust, which is a direct byproduct of a thermitic reaction, the NASA thermal images of the rubble piles indicating very high temperatures days after the event that can be caused by ongoing thermitic chemical reactions, and the high-tech explosive nanothermite found all through the dust. And, of course, the fact that the remarkable collapse, supposedly from a new phenomenon called thermal expansion due to an office fire, looks exactly like a controlled demolition. The murder of thousands on 9-11 wasn't considered a crime, and therefore never investigated as a crime, which may be why so much forensic evidence is ignored, such as the iron microspheres and the explosive nanothermite found in the dust, and that mysterious eutectic steel. Don't they deserve some justice? So you let a fire burn for more than 24 hours and still the steel doesn't, you know, deform even. And once again, that was a, what, a 1250 beam he had? Rather interesting because I used them in the construction of my dwelling. I recommend, you know, steel's a wonderful thing. Why is it that never before in the history of man had steel framed buildings collapse due to fire, thermal expansion? So if you ever wonder if it's an inside job. Now it's years later, and I know when it happened, you couldn't believe that. And I don't want you to believe it. I want you to ask questions. Believe what you want to believe, but don't be afraid when you ask questions to find out answers that don't jive with the story. The other interesting stuff, here's a couple pictures for you. Who made money on 9-11? Who placed put option bets on United Airlines and on American Airlines in greater quantities than ever before? Well, it turns out it was a little Wall Street company called A.B. Brown. Who used to run A.B. Brown? Could that have been Buzzy Krongard? Hmm, wasn't he like number two or number three in the CIA? And why that's interesting, first discovered, you'll like this, is, was the Israeli Hezaria Institute for Counterterrorism had documented that unknown individuals with accurate foreknowledge of the tax, had purchased an obvious and unusually large number of put options on United and American Airlines shortly before the attacks. Well, gee, isn't that rather interesting? Boy, so there was foreknowledge by someone. Rather interesting, huh? Put options are essentially a bet that a stock price will fall abruptly. The seller, having entered into a time-specific contract with a buyer, does... Oh, with a buyer, does not need to own the actual shares at the time the contract is purchased. Boy, is this like naked short selling? Why don't you look up Goldman Sachs high frequency trading? How about JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs? In 90 days, the last quarter, they didn't lose a penny. Profits are way up. How'd your bailout thing go? By the way, how are your children doing? How's their future looking? How's that economy treating you? But anyway, suppressed details. There's another one for you. Suppressed details of criminal insider trading led directly to the CIA's highest ranks. Don't believe me? Read the article yourself, okay? CIA Director Buzzy Buzzy, I don't know why they call him Buzzy, Krongard managed the firm that handled the put options on United Airlines stock. And that was by Michael J. Rupert. It's funny, too, because Krongard, if you want an update, you know, now he's on the uh, advisory board of Blackwater. Remember Blackwater, the people that, you know, kill people in Iraq? Yeah, they were down in Katrina, too, weren't they? Blackwater on the street. Now they changed their name to XE. Yeah, a country that hires mercenaries. Does that look good for your future? How about your children's future here in the United States? Is that what you want for their future? Okay, once again, suppress details. Now it gets better because now that 9-11's, you know, now that 9-11's done, you've seen a lot of things change. We now have what? 
This comes out of uh, the Washington Post. Top, check it out, top secret America, a hidden world growing beyond control. When you find out that there are, what, more than a thousand branches in the government that spy on Americans, or now we have more, even, what is it, 3,000 firms and agencies involved in the war on terror, and they've spent more than a trillion dollars. Yeah, who's making money? Who's benefiting? Quay Bono, who's profiting from this whole 9-11 terrorism thing? Hmm. Wars based on lies. Just, you know, I want you to tell me, or at least ask yourself these questions, you know. Why did they tell you that um, torture was good? Why did they tell you that? Is torture good? Think. I want you to think for yourself. Is torture good? Now they tell you, the media and the government tell you torture is good. Now they tell you secret arrest is good. That's good. Think for yourself, though, in history. Secret arrest. That good? They're telling you it's good. You know, of the belief, because you've got to do it because you're, you're, you're a terrorist thing, okay? Why are wars based on lies good? Is that now good? Because of the 9-11 lie? That's now good, right? Wars based on lies. That's good now, right? Big government's good. You need more government. They didn't protect you then. You think they're going to protect you next. And I know you think there's change because you got hope. <laughs> Don't get me going. Anyway, they put poison in your food now, and they put poison in your vaccines, and that's good. Yeah, the same people that told you weapons of mass destruction, good. The same people who sold them the weapons of mass destruction in the case of the gas that he used on the Kurds, and I'm talking about Saddam. Oh, and by the way, why Saddam? Maybe we'll save that for another show. Well, maybe we'll listen to um, Tony Blair, right? Or Brown, no. One of those British guys, you know, the parliament guys or whatever, you know, the prime minister, yeah. That's a little clip of him. I think it's a very important uh, message to learn that nothing was going to be perfect in, in a situation where we were in the midst of creating uh, the, um, if you like, the, um, the institutions and the practices of a new world. And the American objective of regime change, which had always been their policy indeed under the previous administration, under pressure of an American military deadline? Well, our position uh, was, was not that. Our position was to support action so that the will of the international community that um, Saddam Hussein disclose and dispose of uh, weapons uh, be, be enforced. Uh, and at the back of my uh, mind was this sense that if the international community did not act here, then the international community would find it difficult to, to gain credibility for acting in other areas. Uh, and uh, th this new world order that we were trying to create was mm -hmm. being put at risk. So now they've told you banker takeovers are good, right? That's good. Let the banker take over because the new Financial Reform Act, how about the new private banking cartel known as the Federal Reserve gets to take over the Economy Act? And who created all this money problem? Makes you wonder, huh? So with a little bit off that, we just want to see what's changed now because of the 9-11 inside job lie. Because if you really think guys in caves can do that, you got a lot to worry about. Here's a little piece. It's how the U.S. government can kill Americans. It's okay now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My topic for this evening is now it's assassinations. What have we allowed ourselves to become? Are we no longer a nation of laws? Have we become instead a nation of men who make secret arrests? Are secret prisons now simply another tool of the federal government law enforcement? Is secret rendition of individuals now permitted out of misplaced fear? Have we decided that the writ of habeas corpus is not worth defending? Is torture now an acceptable tool for making us safe? Unfortunately, the single answer to all of these questions from the leaders of our country and to many of our citizens appears to be yes. And now we are told that assassination of foreigners as well as American citizens is legitimate and necessary to provide security for our people. It is my firm opinion that nothing could be further from the truth. Secret arrests, secret renditions, torture, and assassinations are illegal under both domestic and international law. These activities should be anathema to the citizens of a constitutional republic. The real threat doesn't arise from our failure to torture, 
Rather, desensitizing our nation to the willful neglect and sacrifice of our civil liberties fought and died for over the centuries is the threat. The concept of habeas corpus existed even before King John of England was forced in 1215 by his rebellious barons to sign the Magna Carta. This basic principle and expression of individual liberty, which has survived 800 years, greatly influenced the writing of our Constitution and our common law heritage. Today, we hardly hear a whimper, either from the American people or a stone silent U.S. government, as our cherished liberties are eradicated. Instead, we have a government that deliberately orchestrates needless fear and makes people insecure enough to ignore the reality of their lost liberties. The latest outrage is the current administration's acknowledgement that we now have a policy that permits assassination not only of foreign suspects but of American citizens as well. Of course, the CIA has used secret assassinations in a limited fashion for decades, despite international, domestic, and moral law. When done secretly, as in the past, our government at least recognized that assassination was illegal and wrong. Frighteningly and astonishingly, however, the policy is now explicit. National Intelligence Director Dennis Blair, in open testimony before the House Intelligence Committee on February 3rd of this year, acknowledged that American citizens can indeed be assassinated at our government's discretion. The U.S. government attempted to assassinate Anwar Awlaki in Yemen without even charging him with a crime. We're told this evidence is secret, that he does not deserve any constitutional rights, and that some unknown individual in the administration has the authority to declare him a threat, and therefore a legitimate target for assassination. Yes, I know he's probably a very bad person. Yes, I know that only a few Americans are on the assassination hit list. Yes, I know that artificially generated fear makes a large number of Americans inclined to applaud this effort, which supposedly will make us safe. But if this could become standard operating procedure and a permanent precedent is established, let me assure you that this abuse of the law will spread. It's time for Congress and the American people to wake up to the realities of the dangers we face. We must remember as members of Congress that we have taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. It should not be that difficult to distinguish the difference between the danger posed by the underwear bomber and the danger posed by a government that endorses secret prisons, torture, and assassinating American citizens. And I yield back the balance of my time. So now you might understand why I enjoy listening to Ron Paul and believe that he's correct. When I say believe he's correct, the idea that you can kill Americans without a trial, without a jury. The Patriot Act, it's the opposite. It's anti-patriot. Think of all the legislation they've passed. These same criminals. And you've now got a criminal rogue government. And you have to wake up. Because you're a viewer of the real story. Find out if I lie. Find out if any of this information is real, whether it's true and fine. And think for yourself, is this what you want for your children, for your grandchildren, for your loved ones? Once again, is torture really good? Secret arrest really good? Putting poisons in your food and water? Yes. Fluoride in your water? Why don't you take a look at the bag of the fluoride that goes in your water, okay? There's a little thought for you. Okay, so now you have a whole society of spies, 850,000 of them spying on Americans with top secret clearances. This is the society you want. This is what you want for your children. This is what you think America is. This is what you think the founding fathers wanted. They told you to, be, to watch out for this. And for you people who are Republicans and for you people who are Democrats, it's not about the party. It's about the republic and the country. I would wish for you viewers to consider, would you like to be an American? Not a Democrat, not a Republican.